don't you know I still believe Hey guys, welcome back once again. Today I have this lovely Wicked Witch tutorial in store for you and I thought what better person to try and recreate than a Wicked Witch Woo, my, I'm losing my hat. The typical one, of course, nice and green. And if you'd like to see how this is done, keep watching. To get started, guys, I'm gonna slick my hair back. And first up, we're gonna be applying some prosthetics. So I have pre-made these prosthetics. I have made a nose, ooh, nearly just picked my nose, and a chin prosthetic. I will show you, before we get into it, the sculpting of the actual nose and the chin. I won't show you the casting and the moulding of it as such, as I do have a full in-depth tutorial on that already, so I will leave that at the end of the video, if not down below for you guys to check out. If you are interested in making your own prosthetics, this is a simple, easy prosthetic that you can make at home yourself. It includes plaster and pretty much gelatin. So it is a pretty easy tutorial on how to make your own prosthetics to begin with. However, I will have some other tutorials coming if you are just wanting to do latex kind of prosthetics as well. So when designing a prosthetic, it's always good to start with an actual reference photo of a design that you might like. So here you can see the two photos that I have in mind are just really over the top large noses and quite pointed chins. So I can't really tell you exactly how to do your nose as it will change with whatever you are trying to create, but I just wanted a really pointed and kind of curved. So it was a real like curved bridge of the nose as well as some highly over the top dramatic nostrils, like some crazy ass nostrils is what I'm talking about. And once you're happy with the shape of the actual nose, you just want to go in and add some detail and kind of take back too much clay that you might have put on, especially around the nostrils as I do find it is hard to make it look really nice if you've got too much clay built up there. But then you just want to go in and I've put a little mole on the top of my nose and then with some plastic and a little pointed tool of some kind just go in and add some pore texture. And then you pretty much just want to do the same with the chin, moulding until you're happy with the shape and then adding some texture. But enough chit chat, let's get rack, racking, cracking. And I do actually leave my hair as being held up by two bobby pins at the moment, so we'll see how that holds up throughout the tutorial, shall we? Now, just saying, you do want to make sure your face is free of all of oils and stuff, as it may make the prosthetics not stick as well. I'm going to be applying these with Prozade, and that is, you want to apply it to the actual prosthetic and your face where it's going to go. Wait for them to fully go clear and then place them onto each other and they stick, they bond together. You could maybe use spirit gum. I don't like using liquid latex as an adhesive just because I don't actually think that's the purpose it's made for. I don't really like it. Plus my skin doesn't fare well with latex as you probably would have seen in a previous tutorial if you're not new here. So this is the nose prosthetic and this is the chin. Hmm. And let's get started. Now with gelatin prosthetics, the best way to get a nice smooth edge if it is a little bit rough or a bit too thick when it came out of the mold, I'm sorry I do look ridiculous right now with this smear all over my face, is, but is to use warm witch hazel. It dissolves the gelatin and it creates a nice smooth base without really making it tacky. But while I wait for these to dry, I'm going to look at that. Now this is the witch hazel that I use, it is just from Scotty's makeup here in Australia. I do believe you can get it from most pharmacies, if not you will definitely be able to get it online. In case you were wondering. Okay, so all of the pros I got my face is dry and so is in the chin, the nose just needs a little bit longer so I'll apply this one first. Now if you do find that you didn't quite bring the pros out on your face out wide enough, you can just try and peel back the edge a little bit and apply some. Now if you can let it dry before you push it back down it's even better, but. Now underneath my chin, the edge of the prosthetic is not very good. but. Hopefully you just can't see that. Okay, and then onto it as a nose. <laughs> oh, I love looking at myself in the viewfinder when I have prosthetics on because they can look so absurd, it's great. Now the edges on my nose are much thinner and nicer than the edge of on my chin. I was having problems with the prosthetic today, but I will be able to make this work. Okay. Now just with a cotton bud with a little bit of warm witch hazel on it, just go ahead and work away the edges of the gelatin and you should see it pretty much just dissolve straight away, which is really what you want. So I mean you can obviously still tell it's prosthetic and until I paint it, it's not going to look any better, but the edges 
do look much neater now. So then I'm just gonna let that dry back down before I go applying anything up on my face. But for my face, I am gonna be using some Ben Nye cream paints. So I've got a green, a white, and a black, and a grey. Now I'm using the black and the grey to kind of contour my face. So I'm not sure if I want to use the full black or if I'm going to use the grey, but we'll see when we get there. So I'm just going to go in with the green on a beauty blender. Now this is just ever so slightly damp. I wet it probably about an hour ago and then I just had it sitting into the paper towel trying to get all the water out of it as possible. Oh, my hair. I'm losing it. I'm losing my hair, guys. Okay, so now that I have the green base on, I'm going to go in with the white and apply a highlight all over. So I'm just going to use the same beauty blender and just dab it on. Now I can't tell if this is coming up terribly because it looks good in the mirror but on the viewfinder I look terrified. Like it looks like the white I just added is just sitting there. So hopefully by the end of this I get to the end and it's not looking like that. Okay, I think I'm going to go in with grey. Just because I'm a little bit scared, to be honest. Mm, I think I want black. Once you are happy with the contour and the blending, you just want to set it as is a cream, and it will crease if you do not set it. So I'm just using a translucent powder and putting it all over my face. So now just with a black eyeshadow of any kind, I'm just going in and applying it to the contours to really just make them stand out and make them look even more crazy than they already do. I was really wanting that over the top, really dramatic contour for this look. Making sure to contour your nose as well, just so it really stands out like it's not already going to. Now depending on how you want your witch to look, you could give her crazy eyebrows to match just the crazy wickedness. However, I'm going in with some more tame eyebrows. I'm really just giving her eyebrows that I'd do if I was doing my own makeup. And don't forget to colour in that little mole just so it really stands out. Now with a dark green eyeshadow I'm just going in and really deepening kind of the corners of my eyes. I'm not doing anything too fancy other than just applying a little bit of shimmer to the tops of my eyelids. I'm going in with a darker green shimmer and then a lighter green shimmer just on top. Now I'm just applying a little bit of black to my waterline. I really just want the eyes to be dark and really stand out. Now you could of course put false lashes on, however I just wanted to keep it a little bit more simple and just going in with a little bit of mascara just to really make the eyelashes stand out. And then I just felt like the contour on the chest and the neck were not enough so I'm really just going in and kind of deepening them and darkening them a little bit. And then onto the lips, I'm just using the NYX Liquid Suede in Alien just to do a simple kind of intense black lip. I'm then going in with the green shimmer, the dark one that I put on my eyes and just tapping that to the center of my lips. And then that's it guys, that is your look. You just wanna pop on a wig cap and a wig and the little hat which I'll show you how to make at the end. So there we have it guys, that is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial as much as I did doing it for you. Also I will list down below any products that I did use in the making of this look. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I'm not sure if it is coming across quite as nice on the actual camera as it is in person. I just love how over the top the cheekbones are and the hat is going once again. Don't forget to leave any other suggestions down below of tutorials or looks that you would like to see me do. I always love hearing from you guys. I will also leave down below links to all of my social medias. If you do recreate any of my looks, please tag me in it. I love seeing all of your creations. I may have made this hat a little bit too small. I was running out of cardboard and I was just wearing it with wag. Although I was going for kind of the traditional scary wicked witch, I feel like she kind of looks, whoop, kind of looks glamorous. I wasn't meaning to have that. Like, I'm pretty sure all witchy poo here. She's an Instagram baddie, pretty much. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye! So for this hat, you just want pretty much a round of cardboard, cover that in some black material, then you want to get a cone that's made out of paper. I just found that the easiest to work with. Cover that in some black material. Hot glue gun the two together, put a little bit of ribbon around where they meet, and then attach some bobby pins to the bottom of the hat so it'll stick to your hair. 
And there you go guys, that is a little quick easy witch's hat.